Hello everyone and welcome to Study Travel TV Live, a show of news, statistics and opinion. I'm Nicola Hancock, editor of Study Travel Magazine. Hello everyone, I'm Matthew Knotts, the news editor of Study Travel Magazine. Before we get started, for the best viewing experience, please put the call in side-by-side -side speaker view. Uh, you'll see an icon in the top right corner where you can select the view. We are delighted to welcome you all today to this episode of Study Travel TV Live. In today's broadcast, we'll start with a new story and then we'll be joined by our guest this week, Julia Richter, Managing Director of FDSV, and Patrick Gummerise, President of IE Intercambio. If you have any questions for the presenters or guest speakers or, or comments on the stories, please post them in the chat box and we will read them out at the end. Um, and also a big thank you to our sponsor of this episode, Londonist. OK, let's take a look at our first story. Study Travel Magazine's annual agency survey has been released, showing the continuing impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on agency business in 2021. The survey, which was completed by 174 agents in 46 countries, shows that language business continued to struggle for agents, with business down by 36% compared with 2020. Um, in contrast, agencies that responded to the survey had a 41% increase in secondary business in 2021 and a 27% increase in tertiary business. Overall, language students accounted for 60% of course bookings, a much lower level than the 80% recorded in the pre-pandemic year of 2019. For language study, the UK and Canada were the most popular destinations, as seen on your screen there, both with a 21% market share. In the secondary sector, the UK accounted for 35% of students, followed by Canada on 27. And in higher education, the same two countries were also the top two destinations. Um, only 7% of agencies closed branches in 2021, um, and only 17% had to lay off staff at a much lower ratio than in 2020. Uh, three quarters of respondents said they attended an online conference last year um, and conferences were the predominant means of meeting new school partners. So at this point, we'd like to introduce our guests, uh, Julia and Patrick. Hello. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Um, so, Patrick, we'll go to you first. The UK and Canada were way out front in all of those sectors in 2021. Uh, would you say there were good reasons for this? Yeah, for Brazil, I would agree more with Canada. Canada is uh, our number one destination for many years. And I believe it's because of the, the exchange rate for Canadian dollars that's cheaper for Brazilians to afford. And also uh, there is opportunities for study and work programs. So it's very important in our market to have those kind of work uh, related programs. And now, so I believe for Canada, it's the opportunity for immigration. Uh, for Brazilians, they want to go to a country that possibly they can immigrate in the future. Uh, so that's why I believe Canada is it's one of the, 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 the biggest one. Once, like for the UK, for Brazil, I don't believe it's like, it's still like in the top three. Like we send more to Ireland and Australia more than the UK. But for Canada, I believe those are the main reasons that I just said. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Julia, Germany increased market share um, as a language destination in our survey. Um, how was last year for FDSV uh, member German language schools and, and how are things shaping up for this year? Right, that has also been confirmed to us by a quick survey that we recently conducted among the FDSV members. Um, the German language travel market did not suffer quite as badly as in 2020, fortunately. 
So the language travel uh, was possible at any time under the COVID um, conditions and uh, even the online courses uh, also continued uh, as normal. So students uh, could attend class anytime. Um, I also believe that we were able to provide additional safety um, to our students with our um, student protection plan, uh, which we are very happy about, um, to be honest. Um, despite all circumstances, we are still positive at the moment, but um, the future developments uh, will show as we are facing huge challenges. Uh, the pandemic is still there. We have um, ongoing, the, the ongoing war in the Ukraine. Um, we have increasing energy costs worldwide. Um, therefore, I'm sure higher wages, uh, transport costs and production costs. Um, so let's see, uh, this will bring major challenges uh, for our industry and for all companies worldwide, I guess. Okay, thank you. Um, Patrick, uh, Belter's last couple of surveys have showed increasing share of the higher education sector. Um, so what's driving that? Is it something that Belter has been targeting specifically? And do you think it will continue? Yes, we are seeing like a huge increase like in demand for higher education. And I believe that uh, in Brazil, the reasons are, uh, it's very uh, Brazilian related because like the increase in the violence in the country, it's making more people uh, looking for opportunities abroad and maybe trying to, to get a, a higher education abroad to, to escape Brazil, to escape the violence, to escape this uh, environment. And also the, 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 we have an election year this year in Brazil and the country is very divided. So whoever wins, like 50% will be unhappy with the situation. So we are seeing like more people uh, looking for uh, opportunities to stay uh, longer periods abroad. So this fits in the higher education. And I do believe this will continue for the future because I don't see the situation in Brazil getting better. So more and more people are trying to have a better uh, opportunity in other countries. It's very sad for the country, but it's what is happening right now. People, they, especially the young generation, people from 18 to 30 years old. Uh, there is a recent study in Brazil that shows that 65% of uh, Brazilians from 18 to 30 years old, they want to live abroad. They want to leave, leave Brazil. So that's why I think we are seeing this huge increase in higher education demand. Uh, thank you. Um, Julia, coming back to you, um, FDS3 recently uh, released its own uh, research on the outbound business in 2021. Um, and it's fair to say things looked a little different from the regular pre-pandemic times. Uh, what were the main findings? Um, and, and also you, you have some concern about late bookings, I gather. That's right, Matthew. Our market survey was published in April and the results were, of course, not uh, comparable with those uh, before the pandemic. Uh, the UK, UK suffered uh, extremely, so we had a very big loss um, for UK um, bookings. Um, it was not possible to enter the country without quarantine, as you know, um, especially during summertime. Um, you can imagine that it did not really make sense to send students abroad uh, if we talk about an average stay uh, of two weeks. So um, the UK was completely uh, lost for last summer. Uh, due to the entry regulations, um, we tried to redirect bookings um, to Ireland and Malta, for example. But um, the winners in the end uh, were actually Italy, Spain and France. <laughs> they benefited uh, from uh, the, the bookings uh, we actually had for the UK or for English speaking destinations. And um, yeah, I mean, still talking about a low number um, as we are or if as we were already or still in the pandemic uh, time. Regarding the late bookings, uh, we have the challenge that we often um, have to protest bookings with a little time in advance which makes the whole situation quite difficult. I'm sure some agencies will really uh, reach their limits, especially with host family accommodation requests, um, special requests in general, flight bookings. Um, so a lot of uh, special things uh, 
they they might ask in advance, uh, but we can't maybe, um, yeah, uh, confirm it to them. So um, it's it's it'll be a quite difficult situation for short prior bookings. On top, there is a leak of staff in many companies, uh, which makes the situation um, not easier, unfortunately. Okay, thank you. Um, right, we'll take another story now. Um, as we have just heard in our first story, the UK language sector has lost some market share during the COVID-19 pandemic, and ELT School Association English UK has been lobbying the Home Office on a number of issues that it argues would aid the recovery of the sector, including a group travel scheme for European juniors, work rights for language students, and switching visas in country. Uh, one of the main issues that the association is hopeful on is a possible expansion of the youth mobility scheme to some of the major European markets. Uh, the UK's youth mobility scheme allows 18 to 30 year olds to study and work for up to two years and is currently open to 11 countries, including Hong Kong, Korea, Japan and Taiwan. And just this week, the International Education Association, a group of providers in the Bournemouth, Christchurch and Poole area, has launched a working holiday project uh, working within the Youth Mobility Scheme in collaboration with the local hospitality sector association. Through the scheme, students will be placed with English language schools to brush up on language skills and then be placed in paid empo employment in the area's hospitality sector. Um, so, Julia, the, the Youth Mobility Scheme hasn't been expanded to EU markets previously as there was no need for this when the UK was in the EU. Um, so do you think that a, a UK youth mobility scheme visa would be a, a marketable new product for German agents if it expanded to Germany? Absolutely, Beth. Um, due to Brexit, uh, Europeans can't no longer work in the UK without a working visa or working permit. Um, a youth mobility scheme should therefore be extremely important for the German market too. Um, without question, German agencies could market such a program very well and they already wait for programs like this. So as soon as uh, it's there, I think uh, there is a huge market for it. And Patrick, for many ELT markets around the world, Brazil is one of the top two or three source markets. Um, in 2019, Brazil was 10th for English UK members. Is there anything the UK can do to improve that share? Yes, definitely. Like something like this, like some uh, work related programs or study work programs would definitely help to send more students to the UK. In fact, we send like more than five times to Ireland just because Ireland allows Brazilian students to study work. We send like many like thousands of students to Australia because Australia allows Brazilians to be studying work. So if this change for Brazilians, if the Brazilians could be allowed to study and work or do some, some kind of paid programs, they, this would make like a huge difference and the numbers would increase like uh, uh, exponentially. Thank you. Um, I, th I think you've probably um, answered our next question, but uh, is, the Language Plus Work programs, is, is that, uh, that, that's been the most um, sort of desired product in, in some of the surveys that uh, Belter has done on, on um, Brazilian students and uh, which destinations are the most popular for that kind of yeah, thing? Definitely. In Brazil, those are the most uh, uh, popular programs because since Brazil is a third world country, there is not like much money around us. People need uh, to work in order to, to survive when they, they travel abroad. So that's why the, the countries that allow the study and work uh, options or only the work options are the most popular. So Canada, it's very popular because of that, like Australia, Ireland, the USA for the work and travel, the au pair programs. So the, the, the countries that allow any kind of work or any kind of studying work combined are definitely the, the most popular ones in Brazil. Great, thank you, Patrick. Okay, let's move on to our next story. Um, Up English, a language camp brand launched last year by a Turkey-based agency, Malta Vista, has announced a Turkey summer camp this year for international and local students, adding to an existing offer in Malta. Uh, the camp will be based in the, in the Turkish city of Basra and it's offered to students aged between 9 and 17 years old. Uh, the provider said that Turkey had serious potential as a summer camp destination with affordable prices allied with high quality services and facilities. 
in one of our recent shows, we discussed the establishment of the Philippines as an alternative ELT destination. Cyprus increased market share in 2021 in our aforementioned global agency survey. We've reported on English language providers in places such as Dubai. And this year, we have announced two English language camps in Turkey and another in Italy. So Patrick, would Brazilian parents send their students to Turkey to learn English, do you think? Uh, be very honest, only if the price was like very uh, uh, much, much cheaper than uh, the US, the UK or the uh, Australia, the, the, the most famous English speaking countries, because like the general uh, Brazilian parent don't uh, know much more uh, about like Turkey and have more information. So being very honest would be like hard to sell only with the price where it's extremely competitive. Thank you. Um, Julia, FDSB um, tracks uh, foreign language camps delivered within German speaking countries in, in your annual uh, market analysis surveys. Um, and this was quite a significant uh, segment of business in 2021, at, at more than 20%. Was that purely because of the pandemic and travel restrictions, or, or is this actually a long term sort of growth sector? That's right. During the pandemic, uh, Germany was definitely an option as a language travel destination. Um, more than 20% of all our students in 2021 opt for a language trip in their own country, uh, which is actually nice. But again, um, it would have been much nicer to experience um, everything abroad. Um, it's actually a 10% um, increase compared to 2019. So we, we've had 10% before the pandemic and uh, we've uh, more than 10% uh, on top and it comes up to 20%, which is quite a lot. However, we expect that after uh, COVID, the numbers will um, leave off again to those of 2019, I guess. Um, if the pandemic is still there and the war in the Ukraine continues, the trend uh, to study in Germany will continue, sure, as students feel maybe safer um, to stay in their home country. But um, if everything, uh, you know, comes to positive, then uh, definitely we come back to the numbers uh, before the pandemic. In general, um, Germany was seen as a popular language destination uh, for the younger students um, who were away from home, sometimes for the first uh, time, and uh, also for students looking for a short-term course uh, just for a week or so. And um, I think it's it's a good possibility to, to start off. Is it um, are those kind of programs a, a useful stepping stone for for the younger students that so they'll do that first and then they might. Um, uh, go on a, a, on a trip overseas the following year, maybe? Yes, of course, absolutely. Um, sometimes it's their first uh, language experience, and if they enjoy it, uh, they will certainly continue and, uh, yeah, choose maybe uh, another country um, for the following year. Okay, thank you. Um, let's take another story now. Uh, the Canadian province of Ontario has approved the development of three-year degree programmes at public sector colleges, a move welcomed by providers there. Previously, public colleges could only offer two-year diplomas or four-year career-focused degree programmes, so the move will allow them to expand portfolios and compete with universities. Uh, the government of Ontario said that the expansion of degree programmes aligned with its priority of investing in critical infrastructure and meeting labour demands. Colleges will be able to develop three-year degrees in areas such as healthcare, data, cybersecurity and artificial intelligence. A number of colleges have announced plans to launch three-year courses. And Patrick, uh, as you've already explained to us, um, Brazil is is a major source country for for Canada and and the most popular Canada is the most popular destination um, for Brazilian students. Is this development uh, something that that could also be popular in the Brazilian market? Yes, I I, I believe so. Uh, as I mentioned before, like Canada is, has been our number one destination for many years. And the reasons are the it's an easier visa process. The, the Canadian dollar is cheaper. Uh, the immigration uh, aspect that people can immigrate in the future. So this definitely would be something with a huge market in Brazil. I definitely think it's it's a great thing. Excellent. Okay, um, and uh, moving on. And 
In recent weeks, Study Travel magazine has written about the support that uh, educational institutions around the world have offered to students and, and refugees from the war in Ukraine. Uh, German language school members of FDSB were active with offers of in-person scholarships and free online courses for those affected. The German Academic Exchange Service, or DAAD, also launched a special Ukraine resource site to provide help and information on university admissions, studies, research, residence and everyday life in Germany. DAAD estimates 100,000 Ukrainian students and researchers will need support in Germany. Um, Julia, what can you tell us about the work that your members have been doing to support students and, and refugees from the war in Ukraine? Yeah, there's a huge demand and our language schools offer scholarships and free online courses um, and these programs are very much appreciated by the Ukrainian uh, refugees. Um, in addition, um, the Ukrainian refugees in Germany receive state aid and uh, integration courses uh, in general. So it's uh, something our members, let's say, um, offered on top of the um, normal integration courses um, offered by the German government. But it's really well uh, appreciated um, by the Ukrainian uh, refugees. And, and Patrick, has the war had any impact on the market in Brazil? And has it made students cautious about travel to Europe, for example? Yes, definitely, especially the, the younger uh, people, like junior high school students, uh, the parents are very concerned uh, about this situation because we don't know when this is going to end and what the outcome will be. So people are postponing their programs to later dates and it's definitely having uh, have an impact on the decision making because the parents are very concerned about this. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, and finally, one uh, last thing to update you with. The winners of the Study Travel Secondary School Awards 2022 have been announced, uh, recognising service by schools, agencies, service providers and associations working in the high school sector. The second edition of the unique partner voted Study Travel Secondary School Awards covered 13 categories, including regional awards for secondary schools and agencies and dedicated categories for chain schools, Canadian school boards, guardianship providers and trade associations. Uh, the winners were unveiled during a special gala dinner um, held at the ST Alfie Secondary Focus London in-person plus event, uh, a specialist high school conference attended by more than 330 delegates. Um, and here is a short clip from the event. I wish I had the gallery view on to see who was dancing during that. Okay, um, so that brings us up to date with all of the news in the industry. Um, and at this point, we'll open up to our audience to see if there are any questions for the guests or for the study travel team. Um, these can be on any of the, the stories or topics that we have discussed. So please put your questions um, in the chat box. Um, I can see there's a bit of activity in there. Um, not a question as such, but um, Julia, I have a request for your contact details. Would you be able to um, to pop your email address in the um, in the chat? Um, of course. Yeah. 
Um, in the meantime, uh, Patrick, we uh, we just showed our uh, secondary school awards there. Um, is the high school sector uh, a growing area of business for you and, and for Brazilian agents generally? Yes, yes, it is. It's, it's growing a lot. Like the same thing that's happening with the higher education, it's happening with the high school. More and more parents uh, want to send their kids away from Brazil because of the situation of the violence. And we are seeing like a huge increase in high school demand. In fact, we have like waiting lists for the high school in the US. Like for many years, we didn't have this. So it's, it's growing a lot. Like, and we are expanding to other destinations because we, we need like more destinations right now because like, there is a waiting list for the US. And it's definitely something that's increasing a lot lately. Is that for the, the J1? visa for the u.s yeah the j1 to the yeah, u.s okay. yeah to the u.s but we are we, we are seeing like for private so schools and other other countries too but the, the yeah. way that we have is for the, the j1 you're correct thank you Thank you. And we've got a question for Julia. Uh, we saw earlier in the show that the secondary and tertiary sectors have been a little more resilient uh, than the language school sector. Um, are FDSV members diversifying more into these other sectors? Well, uh, some of our members um, do offer both uh, secondary uh, school and um, language travel, but um, the FDSV is completely concentrating on the language travel, the short-term language travel. So I can't really tell too much about the long-term courses, the school visits, high school and secondary focus. Okay, thank you. Um, oh, hang on, we have got a question in there. Uh, it's from uh, Kieran Mann in, in Ireland. How are you, Kieran? Um, it says, uh, hi, Julia, you mentioned Spain, Italy, and I think France were winners during the um, or post-COVID as, as against UK, Canada and Ireland. Um, can you expand as to why this was? Was it health or price? And is that still the case? It's uh, not still, it's not the case anymore. Uh, we have a huge demand for UK and, and also Ireland at the moment and Malta um, as the years um, before uh, the pandemic. Um, it was definitely um, due to the reason that the entry restrictions were so um, difficult for the UK and uh, also Ireland. Um, talking about the short-term courses, um, average two, two weeks, um, that the majority just switched completely to another language. That was the main reason. Or stayed in Germany, as we've already discussed. <laughs> okay. Oh, there's another question oh, in the that? chat. Yes, a mm -hmm. uh, question to for Patrick. How does the accommodation shortage in Ireland affect the enrollment among Brazilian students? There are reports Brazilian students having to sleep on the streets in some cases. Yeah, that, that, it's happening right now. There's, it's a big, big problem that we are facing in Ireland because there's no, not enough accommodations for everyone and the prices are uh, out of control for uh, accommodations and the schools are having problem with accommodations. And also the schools in, in Ireland are having problems with teachers. Some, some schools don't, don't have teachers there. So since Ireland is a very strong market for us and for Brazil, that's the issues that we are facing right now, accommodations and lack of teachers in some schools. Do you think that would push you to send your student clients elsewhere? Yes, definitely. If this continues, we, we can have like enough accommodations for the, the, the Brazilians in Ireland. We'll definitely try to send them to other locations, other countries. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have our study travel um, Alfie Island uh, event next week. So uh, we'll have a chat with the with the schools. And I, I believe you're coming as well, Patrick. Yeah, right? I'll, yeah. I'll be there. Yeah, I'll so, be there. Uh, One of the main can... reasons I'll be there is because of this issue. But yeah, it's we definitely can... something we need to talk. We can get a good uh, update while we're there. Yes, yes. Okay, that looks like the end of our uh, audience Q&A, which brings us to the end of this week's Study Travel TV Live. Um, at, yes. <laughs> our next episode will be on Wednesday the 18th of May at the same time of 4pm BST. 
visit the Study Travel TV live page on the Study Travel Network, which you can find under the magazine section in the menu, as you can see on that picture. Um, and we'll be announcing on that page the guest speakers for the next broadcast, and you'll be able to find a recording of this broadcast and all of the previous episodes. So that's it for today. We'd like to say a big thank you to our special guests. Julia, thank you for your time and insights today. Thank you very much. Um, and Patrick, thank you so much for joining us and, and for sharing your thoughts. Thank you. Thank, thank you. It was an honor to participate. Thank you. Th thank you. And I look forward to seeing you next week in, in Ireland. And thank you again to our, our sponsor this week, Londonist. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>